Hi guys, how you doing? And welcome to the first episode of Richard Rants, and quite possibly the last, depending on how this one goes. So, before we start, I've got to, for legal reasons, read a disclaimer to you. Okay, so bear with. <sighs> Ready? The video you're about to watch contains views and opinions of Richard Graham only. That's me. If at any point you are offended by any of the comments or views or opinions, then please stop the video and search for cat videos instead. Thank you. There you go, legal disclaimer, I'm all sorted, we're all covered. So what are Richard's rants? Well, there are a lot of things that annoy me in the world. Um, some of them I would consider quite normal that annoy quite a few people. And there's some maybe niche ones that maybe I overreact to. Um, however, I, I'm not worried about expressing my views about said things that frustrate me. So I thought, you know, let's test this. Let's film a couple and see if you agree with me and whether these things I'm just blowing mountains out of mohills or whether you actually agree with me and you find them frustrating too. So here we go then. First one is about being prepared. So what do I mean by being prepared? Well, example number one. During the current climate, the last three, four months, we've had to queue a lot more, um, which has taken our shopping trips a lot longer to complete. This hasn't been helped by those that aren't prepared. Okay, so for example, you go to Tesco's. This is a prime example of this because you've had to queue to get in, generally. You've then walked around the store with your trolley and you've had to queue down the aisles because you've had to keep your two meters apart. And then you've had to queue to go to a checkout. Now at this point, I must sidetrack and say, why are people still queuing for a checkout? Why are you not using your scan and shop? Or at the very least, self-service? Tell you for why. If you use the checkout, you've got your trolley. You walk it, walk it around the supermarket, you're filling your trolley, okay? Once you've filled it. You then queue for the checkout. When you get to the checkout, you have to unpack your trolley, okay? So it goes on the conveyor belt, the cashier at the end is throwing stuff at you as fast as they can, okay? You're then packing your food back in your bags and putting that back in your trolley. So you've now refilled your trolley twice. You've unpacked once and you filled twice. You then get home and you have to unpack your bags that you've packed at the supermarket. So you're unpacking again. So you've packed twice, you've unpacked twice. With scan and shop, you pack once, you unpack once. Where's the logic in queuing for a checkout? I don't understand it. Anyway, so you know when you're queuing for a checkout, you know what's gonna come next they're gonna ask you to pay for your goods. <gasps> Surprise. So why is it, and this is generally women, this is not being sexist, this is generally women, why is it they wait to the very last second when the cashier says that's 3,000 pounds for your shop, please, they think, oh, I've got to pay for it now, and they start rummaging. So they've got this handbag that's like the bloody TARDIS. So they've got everything in there, yeah? And they eventually find their purse, but that's not the end of it, is it? No, because they open their purse, they've got about 50 million cards in there. So it's like, oh, I've got to search through to get me club card and then I've got to get my payment card. Why do you not just get the cards out? You've been queuing to get into the shop. You've been queuing for a checkout. Why not at that point, rather than checking your bloody phone, why not get your cards out Put them in your pocket, so when you get to the checkout, you go, there's my club card, and there's my payment card. Quick as that. Is it really that hard? Especially at the moment, you've got more time to think about it. Because apparently we're in unprecedented times. That's another thing. Surely there must be another word for unprecedented. Every news channel you listen to, every interview, every interviewee, these are un unprecedented times. This is an unprecedented outbreak. This is unprecedented job losses, blah, blah, blah. Stop being lazy, get another word, because I'm sick of unprecedented. All right, thank you. So anyway, during these unprecedented times, you have more time to get prepared and get your cards ready. Please do it. 
be a lot easier, wouldn't it? And then the other buggers that are having to wait for you because you're being so slow will get through quicker. Or failing that, use your scan and shop. A lot easier, thank you. Second example would be a lot more people during these unprecedented times are going online to order their goods now. Um, from their weekly shop, if they can get a slot, to items that they need, DIY, maintenance stuff, whatever the case may be, entertainment stuff, etc. Now, most people have used Amazon, okay? Now, Amazon is fantastic. I'm not gonna knock it because it is brilliant, because you order on one day, and generally, if you've got Prime, you get it the next day, okay? However, even Amazon, during these unprecedented times, couldn't deliver the next day. This is Amazon. They're huge. They've been doing it for donkey's years. They've got millions, I'd imagine, of staff, okay? So when you order from a small independent shop or someone who's just online, don't imagine that they're gonna get it next day because it's not gonna happen, okay? Now, a lot of people that are ordering online have never done it before and get a little bit scared. Now, I get that. I understand that. Okay, so they have to phone for reassurance once they've made an order, okay, which is fine. Frustrating, but fine. I can deal with that. What I can't deal with is when you make that phone call, you know what's going to happen next. The person at the end of the phone is going to say, can I have your order number, please? At no other point of the conversation are they going to say anything but can I have your order number, please? That's the first thing they're gonna say because that is your identifying number. So why is it then when people phone up, yeah, I ordered such and such online yesterday. I just wanna see what's going on with it, please. Okay, that's fine, no problem at all. Can I have your order number? My what? Your order number. Oh, uh, uh, hold on, um, let me just find it for you, hold on. Five hours later, they finally get talked through various different numbers and finally get to their order number. Surely you know that is gonna be asked for first thing, first thing of the conversation. So get your order number ready. Or if you don't know your order number, write it down. Or if you can't work your phone properly and you can't talk and scroll at the same time, write it down before you make the phone call. Another example, along the similar lines is when you're booking stuff in for a service, a repair, or whatever the case may be. Generally speaking, the conversation goes like this. Hi, I wanna book my car in for a service. No problem at all, sir. Can I take some details? What's your registration number? Um, hold on, let me just look out the window and I'll find out for you. What's the make and model of your car? Uh, Hold on, let me look out the window and I'll tell you. If it's a bike, uh, hold on, I'll walk to my garage and I'll tell you. You know you're booking something in, okay? The person you're booking in with needs some idea of what to expect, yeah? It's not like a lucky dip where you just turn up and they're like, oh, surprise, we've got one of them, brilliant. No, they need to know what's coming so they can prepare themselves for the service, the repair, or whatever the case may be, yeah? So even basic, basic details. If it's a car, you're gonna need at least your registration number, you're gonna need the make and model of your car, and maybe the color, yeah? You've been driving it around how long? You should know this by now. If it's a bicycle you're booking in, you should know what make the bike is at the very least, what type of bike it is at the very least. Be prepared, be ready. It shouldn't come as a shock that that is one of the first questions they ask you. Pay and display machines in car parks. Wow, gee whiz. The new modern ones require two things from you before it issues you a ticket generally, okay? Now they're not different. They're all pretty much the same. They're gonna need your registration number and they're gonna need money. This should not come as a shock, okay? So, when you're queuing halfway around the car park, ready to use your machine, please have your registration ready. Have your coins in your hand ready to feed into the machine. But, oh wait, 
some people are like, oh, well, I've got my coins ready, Rich, and I know my registration number, but it still takes me hours to find out where I put the coins. Watch the person in front of you. Rather than on your phone, what following Snapchat, Facebook, whatever, watch the person in front. If you're a little bit anxious, you're not sure how to use a machine, the best way to learn is by copying someone else. Because you're the one standing behind and going, come on, taking ages. Come on, put the coin in. And then you're that person when you get to the machine. Oh, <laughs> where can I put my coins? So please, if you're next in line, just watch what the other person does. You're not watching their pin number. It's not security details they're putting in. They're doing what you're gonna do next and the person behind you is gonna do next. And if we all help each other by watching, people will move that little bit quicker, won't they? And then I won't have to stand behind you for 10 minutes thinking, why on earth did I have to get stuck behind you? Now, as I say, We've had a lot more to deal with during these unprecedented times. But even if we can shave a few seconds, a couple of minutes off our daily things, whether it be queuing for shopping, whether it be phoning about an order, whether it even paying for parking, it will make the world a much better place and it will do my stress levels the world of good if you can just be a little bit more prepared. Thanks for watching.